When it comes to landscape photography, one of my favorite things to do is long exposures. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a shot that I took with my Nikon D850 here. And I'm gonna be showing you the post-processing techniques I use to create a fine art landscape photography piece. Just a little background behind this shot I'm about to work on. It was taken at Lake Bonnie in Barmra, which is in a rural area of South Australia. On this day, it was overcast and the wind was really powering with low cloud moving fast across the sky and the water was churning. I found this large dead tree which had fallen on the bank of the lake and part of the root system resembled the skeletal head of some dinosaur-like creature when done from a certain angle, which was looking back towards this lone tree out in the water. So I set up the D850 with my 16 to 35 millimeter lens using a 10 stop ND filter in combination with a 0.6 soft grad filter to help dial back the sky in brightness. This whole area really is a landscape photographer's dream and I really do recommend that you visit it and I hope to get back there one day soon. Okay, so this is our shot here on screen, and for those interested, the shot is a 72 second long exposure. All right, let's rip into it. Okay, so I'm starting off in Lightroom Classic, and one of the first things I do is head down to Lens Corrections. So all you've got to do is click on both these, that's Remove Chromatic Aberration, and also Enable Profile Corrections. You'll notice that we've lost a lot of vignetting from the 16mm focal length when you do that. Okay, so I'm now gonna head up to the basic. So to begin with, I'm just gonna lift up the exposure a little bit up to something like about ooh, 75 is a bit too much. I'm just gonna lower that down just a tad, just to something like plus 40, that'll be fine. I'm also going to adjust the shadows because I really wanna see a little bit more definition in that tree stump in the foreground. Highlights, I'm just gonna drop those down a tad. Down below, we've got uh, texture, clarity, and dehaze. I really like using dehaze because it really brings out the definition in the cloud in the long exposure. So you'll notice when I lift up the dehaze slider, it really cuts into that cloud. So I'm just gonna leave it at about 35. The other thing when it comes to fine art landscape photography, I really like to use black and white. So I'm just gonna remove all the vibrance, all the saturation, and then we've got this really dramatic looking piece. Also, back up top, I'm gonna to increase the contrast. So you'll see by adding a little bit of contrast, it really does bring out those blacks in the shot. So just up to something about 34 or 35 will do. Okay, so already it's starting to take shape. But there's one thing you'll notice in the top left corner, that stump is a little bit dark. What I'm actually gonna do is create a brush and I'm just gonna adjust that brush by lifting up the brackets a little bit. I'm just gonna paint inside that stump. And what I'm gonna do with this brush is I'm gonna be able to lift up and adjust the brightness on this stump. I don't go too close to the edge. If you go too close to the edge of where you're painting, what happens is sometimes you get this little bit of a halo glow. So I tend to stay inside a little bit. So once I've painted with the brush, I'll come back over to where it says exposure. And I'm just gonna lift that up a bit. You'll see that it's just lifting that top of that stump up a little bit more to match in with the other parts of the stump. One of the other things I like to do is down the bottom of the frame, I'm just gonna create a new linear gradient and then I'm just gonna lift it up. And again, I'm gonna just introduce a little bit of darkness down the bottom here. So I'm actually gonna drop down the exposure. It just gives it a little bit more of a foreboding look down the bottom. Also, you can do this towards the top of the screen as well. So if you just create another gradient and you just drop that down from the top. And again, I'm just gonna do the same type of thing where I'm just gonna drop just that little bit down, just a tad. So already you can see that the image is starting to take shape. 
What I'm gonna do now is send this on over to Photoshop because there's some things that I like to do in Photoshop that I think work just a tad better than what you can do in Lightroom. So now we have our shot open in Photoshop. You'll notice that out in the water, there's these couple of limbs sticking out. Some people would like to leave those there. I tend to just get rid of those little type of things because I like to have this clean image look. There are a couple of ways you can get rid of these. You can use your spot healing brush over here on the left. And very simply, if you just zoom in here, you can go around the outside of this branch that's just sticking out in the water, paint over it, let go, and it gets rid of it. So that's one way you can do it. Just let me undo that. There's quite a few ways you can actually do this. Another way is you can get a hold of your clone stamp, which is over here on the left. You click on that, bring your clone stamp over to the image, and just using your brackets, you can adjust the size. I've got a soft edge on this clone stamp. So if you press down Alt and click on the image and then drag that across, you can see that automatically it kind of copies the water that was on the other side. And basically, there you go. We've gotten rid of one of those branches. I'm just gonna use that same technique and get rid of this other branch on the other side. And there you go. We've now removed those couple of branches out of the water and it just gives it that little bit more of a cleaner look. Now also in Photoshop, if you go back up to your spot healing brush and on this day, and after I'd been using this camera for a week, changing lenses out in really strong wind, I got a few dust spots over the sensor. So what you can actually do is very quickly go in and you can see there's these couple of little spots here and there. I just tend to get rid of them with the spot healing brush very quickly. I'll just go up to the top of frame because that's normally where you see the most of them. There's one. Come over to the side, just scroll up to the side there. Scroll down. So I'm just checking through the sky to see if there's any of these little, there's another one over to the left here. It's a funny thing on this trip, I'd actually forgot to bring my sensor cleaning stuff. So I thought, oh well, I'm gonna be busy in post-processing getting rid of all those little dust marks over the sensor. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I don't mind that because it's turned that shot into a really dramatic looking landscape by turning it black and white. We've added those gradient type filters in Lightroom Classic from top and bottom. And also we've just added that little bit more brightness on the top left-hand side of the frame with that stump. Now, as I said before, it doesn't matter. You could have left those little tree limbs sticking out of the water. I like to have that bit more of a cleaner image by cloning those out, or you can just use the spot healing brush as well. There are also other ways you can do it, but I've just shown you this quickly just for this tutorial sake. Okay, so that's just the way I like to do up my shots very quickly in Lightroom Classic and Photoshop, giving the landscape a really dramatic look. So there you go. You could now print and frame this image to match a black and white themed decor or even a nature theme. Now in next week's video, I'm going to be doing something similar, only using my Nikon Z7 and 14 to 30 millimeter F4S lens with this cool location I found. And yes, that's me almost losing my Z7 camera to some rogue wave. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.